this isn't magic, I really don't know what is. Well, today I'm going to share with you how you can remove an extremely complex obstruction from an extremely detailed background and that too fast. These three combinations usually don't go together, but you and I are going to do it. And none of it is planned. Trust me, you can do it too. So without any further ado, let's get started. Back in the magical world of Photoshop and this is from the top of the Empire State Building. If you ever go to New York, all of the other observatories are fine, but don't miss the Empire State Building that has the best views. Now, the very first thing that might come to your mind when it comes to removing these security fences are just using content aware fill. Let's see if it works. Let's make a quick selection of the portion of the fences and let's see if it works. Let's go to edit and then content aware fill. We're just going to keep it default for now. As expected, it just did not work. If you zoom in right over here, you would notice that it's practically impossible to get these details back. Why? Because the way the content aware fill works is that it samples other areas and uses those samples to fill in these areas. But these buildings have unique details. And how are you going to get those details back? If the background were simple, if it was blurred, if it was something predictable, we could use content aware fill like we have done in this video. And you should try this method. But in this case, the background has so much detail, so many intricate details. With a population of 8 million, you cannot expect the content of air filter to predict the design of New York City. So what do we do? You see, when you go to locations like this, it's not that you take one selfie and you just go away. No, you take a lot of pictures. So I started scrolling and going through the pictures of the top of the Empire State Building that I took and tried to find something that would be similar to the background of the selfie. Now keep in mind, none of these photos aligned well. On top of that, some were taken with wide angle lens, some were taken with telephoto like this one. None of these photos were taken with alignment in mind or removing the fence in mind, which teaches you a great lesson about whenever you are in a situation like this, do keep those in mind and take photos accordingly. But anyway, we have to make do with what we have to regenerate those details. Since this is the most wide photo, let's just drag it and drop it into Photoshop. All right. Now, once we do, let's select all of it by pressing Ctrl or Command A, Ctrl or Command C, and let's place it Ctrl or Command V. Now, this was just for demonstration. Let's go ahead and delete that. That was content of fill. Now, unlock the background layer. Now, we have layer 0 and layer 1. Now, here's an essential tip. We don't want to deform the face to match that with the new background. You want to deform the new background to match that with the existing details. So, keep it at the top. Whatever you want to deform, keep it at the top. All right. If I kept the face at the top and then aligned it, the face would be deformed. We don't want that. We want the opposite. So select both of them. Select the first one. Hold the control or command. Select the second one. Both of them are now selected. Let's go to edit and then auto align layers. Keep it at auto. That's fine. And hit OK. Here's another great lesson. They are not aligning. And you know why? Because the selfie is inverted. <laughs> have a look at the background right here. You see this building? On the right side of that, we have this one. So when you turn that on, it is just the opposite. So usually when you take a selfie, the photos are mirrored. Sometimes it's not. You can set the settings that way. But I usually like to take my selfies mirrored because the other way around looks weird to you not to other people. But anyway, I'm going to keep it that way. So to match up for that, to catch up for that, press Ctrl or Command D and right click on it and choose Flip Horizontal. Hit Enter or Return and now it's going to match. If you didn't want to flip the background, you can flip the subject. It's up to you. So select both of them again. Let's go to Edit and then Auto Align Layers. Keep it at Auto, hit OK. And take a look, my friend. It is aligned, isn't it? So here's the before. Take a look, we are recovering those fence cover details and that too from some random photos. So if I turn that back on, see, those are aligned as well. But there might be a slight problem. Before we move any further, have a look, there's a gap right here. So if we were to create a negative mask right here, and then if we took the brush and if we were trying to get the details back, let's take a soft round brush right here. We were painting in white and we were trying to remove those. Don't worry about matching right now. We're going to take care of that later. And if we tried to get the details back right here, it was fine. But the image only goes till here. What about this extra area? Well, you can crop it, but if you are a perfectionist and you want this detail, well, there's a way we can get it. And that's from other photos. So let's delete this mask. That was just to show you. Let's delete it now. Let's bring in another photo that shows more details on the left-hand side. More details on the left-hand side of this particular building that you see. I think this image would look perfect. Have a look on the right-hand side. Now keep in mind the image is flipped, so it is the opposite. There are so many details that we can use. So let's just open that up in Photoshop on a brand new document. Now first of all, let's flip it. Unlock the background layer. Press Ctrl or Command T. Right-click on it and then choose Flip Horizontal. And then we only want this particular area on the left-hand side. Let's not take the entire thing 
thing because sometimes what happens is one part of the image is aligned and the other part is not aligned as well. So you need to be careful. Only take the areas that you want uh, the details from. So I'm going to take about this much. I think I took too much. Let's subtract some. Press Ctrl or Command C and then get back to the image and then press Ctrl or Command V. Now keep in mind we are only trying to fill up these areas. Also, since we want to deform this and not this, we will keep the new one at the top and select both of these layers. Let's go to edit and then auto align layers, auto hit OK. And there you go. It adds that extra detail. We don't need all of it, only some of it. And also it might create some edge issues right here. So we can make it softer by creating a mask right here. Take the brush, take a soft round brush, black as the foreground color and then just paint. We only want details around the corners. That's all. Make sure everything is straight. There you go. One other thing you can also do is that you can delete the whole mask, delete it and create a negative mask instead. Hold the Alt key or the Option key and then click on the mask button and then only fill up this area. That's all. That's what we need. Fill that with white. That's pretty much it. Now to clear things up, first of all, let's crop accordingly and we're going to crop according to the original image. So hold the Ctrl or Command and click on the thumbnail of the selfie right there. Press C for the crop tool and we're just going to crop that area, hit enter or return. Press Ctrl or Command 0 to zoom and fit the image. And then let's just create a group of all of these background fillings. So select the first one, hold the Ctrl or Command, select the second one, and then press Ctrl or Command G. Now most of us, including me, when I first started doing this, thought that maybe we can create a negative mask by holding the Alt key or the Option key, click on the mask button, and then take the brush and just cover up these areas with white. And then we can later match it. What's the big deal? There is indeed a big deal. And the big deal is, let's say you are painting this area. There's a slight movement, very slight. And if you try to use Liquify or Warp to correct that, what will happen is that there are other areas that might go out of alignment. So all of it is aligned, but only 99%. If you try to account for the 1%, it's going to be a very hard thing to do. So let me make you a proposal, and I hope you'll say yes. And that is, why not completely replace the background instead of working hours and hours trying to align it to the original? You have better quality, you have better sharpening, and you have better contrast. So why not try that? And since it is 99% aligned, you can easily get the hair areas back and that too with all the details. So here's how to do it. Delete the mask. And this was just to show you. Let's delete it. You can turn this off for the moment. Select the selfie right here and then click on any of these three tools, the object selection, the quick selection or the magic wand, any of these three. And at the top, click on select subject. If you don't see select subject or using an older version of Photoshop, you can also manually make a selection. You don't have to be very accurate. Rough is fine. Now, once you have a selection, then turn this group on, which is background recovery and make sure the selection is still active. Hold the alt key or the option key and click on the mask and there you go, my friend. Isn't that fantastic? Now, the hair area is not nice. So select the mask, take the brush, black as the foreground color. Let's take it away from these areas and get the details back in the hair areas. Now I know that the old background is not matching with the new one, but trust me on that, we can easily fix it. So let's get the details back. Have a look, it's still aligning well. Not 100%, but it's workable. Now as we recover this area, there's a rod in there, so we need to be careful. Paint that area back with white to replace it. Have a look, there's a wall, so we don't need to bring that back. Similarly right here, let's bring the hair back at the top. Again, there's a rod, be careful. So that, my friend, is done. Also, if you want to make the edges a little softer, you can use the smudge tool right here. Make sure the strength is 50. Make it a little smaller. And then you can push it inwards a little bit. See how nicely it made the edges soft. Now, the last step is matching the color and the contrast. And how do we do that? For it, there's a trick. Let's just go into any area of the image and take a hard round brush. Let's take this brush. Make sure you have selected the brush tool and not the smudge tool. With black as the foreground color, just paint on one side of the building. Now we will try to match both of those. So just about the background recovery layer, create a curves adjustment layer. You might have already guessed it. And then first of all, it's a little brighter. So let's take the slider on the right to the left. Now, whatever we do will affect the entire image. We want it to be limited to background recovery. So let's press this button. That way it is limited to background recovery. So let's make it brighter so that it matches with that of the neighbor. Also, it's a little yellowish. So let's go to the blue channel. Blue is the opposite of yellow. So let's take the blues down. Again, if you look at the shadows of the original image, they are a little brighter. So let me paint this way so that I can see it clearly. All right, in the mask, 
and take a look just compare all right so we need to match that so let's go back to the rgb of the curves and then take the left point up and take it up until it matches i think that point fits perfectly have a look there nearly matching now you can also make it slightly brighter from the center if you want just like this and it kind of fits so let's zoom out and take a look so here's the before not matching at all and if you look at the edges you will notice the difference so this is the before this is the after matching so very much now we still need to fill up that gap we made just for matching purposes so select the mask right here take the brush white as the foreground color just fill up that area back and there you go my friend want to have a look at the before and after so here is the before and here is the after absolutely gone looking gorgeous amazing isn't it so what do we learn from here all in all take a lot of photos never delete your photos and don't judge yourself too hard i have some friends who would take lots of photos and then after taking all of those photos they would go back to their camera and delete some of the photos one by one they would judge themselves too hard and they would think amish this is not good i cannot keep it it just lowers my self esteem don't think that way you never know what picture might save your brass all right let us do a quick little recap first of all we did try content aware and it did not work because the background is so detailed and it's hard to invent those so we searched for different photos tried to align it and we did find one photo that would work good and it was this photo but there was a problem with this photo here's the before here's the after there was this area which was being left out and being a perfectionist you can either crop it and stop it right here but then i wanted to just fill this area up so we brought in another image that had those details and then we decided instead of covering just those words why not cover the complete background because it's much easier to do that than trying to align the new image 100% after that we did a little bit of color matching and that's all i hope this video helped you and if it did make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other feature tips tricks or tutorials by the way major news announcement i met nasir you might know him from nas degree and i'm doing a live free photoshop workshop for nas academy and it's absolutely for free you can absolutely join so registrations are open check the link in the description or click right here to join you don't have to pay anything anywhere and we can connect live and we'll learn photoshop it's going to be an amazing workshop so do come for it i would also like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing and brilliant and awesome people for supporting pixim perfect on patreon because of them all of these free stuff tutorials and content is possible thank you so very much thank you for watching i'll see you in my next one till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating what can i do